Electrogens are the key component of microbial fuel cells. In the microbial fuel cell, they take in organic matter and digest it, releasing electrons, which are captured and used to generate an electric current. As mentioned in the previous video, organic matter is decomposed by reacting it with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. In this reaction, the oxygen takes electrons from the organic matter. Because of this, it is called an electron acceptor. In the absence of oxygen, an alternative electron acceptor is required. Anaerobic microorganisms decompose organic matter without oxygen. All anaerobic microorganisms require an electron acceptor to replace oxygen. For electrogens, which are a type of anaerobic microorganism, the electron acceptor can be a metal such as iron, or a nonmetal such as sulfur, or an organic compound such as fumarate. Let's look at an example of this process, with acetate being the organic compound that is being broken down. Acetate has the chemical formula CH3CO2, and there is a negative charge on the acetate uh, compound. Um, usually it is paired with some sort of positively charged um, ion, such as a hydrogen ion or a sodium ion depending on what the source of the acetate is. The electrogen will digest one molecule of acetate and two molecules of water to produce two molecules of carbon dioxide along with seven hydrogen ions and eight electrons. As you can see, there are more electrons than there are hydrogen ions, and this is because the charge of the acetate is negative. This means that overall this chemical reaction is uh, charge balanced. Two common species in microbial fuel cells are Geobacter sulfur reducens and Schuonella. Today I will be focusing on Geobacter sulfur reducens because it is more common in microbial fuel cells. Geobacter sulfur reducens is a gram-negative proteobacterium which is obligately anaerobic, meaning that it cannot survive in high oxygen conditions. In nature, it consumes acetate or hydrogen and reduces metals and sulfur, thereby transferring electrons to the reductant. Geobacter sulfur reducens is able to transfer electrons to the metal or sulfur from its surface using conductive cytochromes, or at a small distance from its surface using electrically conductive pili which are hair-like strands coming from the bacteria. These conductive pili are made of proteins, um, and they act as conductive wires forming a circuit with the metal, and they are often called nanowires. The formation of nanowires is one of the most impressive parts of these bacteria, and they are very important in the function of a microbial fuel cell involving geobacter sulfur reducens. A microbial fuel cell consists of two cells that are filled with water. Each cell contains an electrode, and the two electrodes are electrically connected with a load in between them. One cell contains the anode and the bacteria culture, including electrogens, and is not exposed to air. The other cell is exposed to air. When an anode is present in a cell containing an electrogen, such as geobacter sulfur reducens, it acts as a sink for electrons. The electrogens break down organic matter and donate electrons to the anode in the process. These electrons generate an electric current, and the net effect is that we have created electricity from organic matter, all thanks to the electrogens. Geobacter sulfur reducens is an ideal organism for microbial fuel cells because of its exceptional ability to form biofilms on the surface of an electrode. When an electrode is present in the system, electrogens are naturally attracted to it because it serves as an ideal environment for them to digest organic matter. As they attach to the electrode, they start to cover the entire surface of the electrode, digesting biomass and donating electrons to it. We might expect that once the electron, electrode is covered, no more electrogens can attach to the electrode. However, Geobacter sulfur reducens is able to attach itself to other geobacter sulfur reducens cells, um, which are attached to the electrode. 
This process continues until a thick layer of geobacter sulfur reducing cells is formed on the surface of the electrode. You might be wondering, how does a cell attached to the electrode obtain organic matter to eat, and how does a cell at the edge of the layer donate its electrons to the electrode? In order to clump together, the bacteria form an extracellular polymeric matrix, which contains channels for water and other nutrients, such as food, to pass through and, rea- and reach cells throughout the film. In the case of geobacter sulfur reducens, electrons are transferred throughout the film with the assistance of microbial nanowires, which, sor- which uh, form a sort of conductive network channeling electrons towards the electro. This network of sharing food and transporting electrons allows geobacter sulfur reducens to be one of the most effective organisms for microbial fuel cells. This structure of layered cells held together by an extracellular polymeric matrix is called a biofilm. Electrogens are unable to break down many complex organic compounds. For example, geobacter sulfur reducens is unable to break down sugars, fats, or proteins. It is only able to break down acetate and hydrogen. In order to have a microbial fuel cell that can utilize a wide variety of organic material, there needs to be a mix of microorganisms that can break down complex organic matter into simple compounds that the electrogens can digest. Without this mix of bacteria, and other microorganisms, the microbial fuel cell would only be able to utilize pure acetate or hydrogen to make electrical energy. In conclusion, the unique properties of electrogens are key to the functioning of microbial fuel cells. By oxidizing organic compounds and producing electrons which can be picked up by an electrode, these bacteria can generate an electric current.